Good morning, church. Welcome to Redeemer. I'm glad that you've tuned in with us this morning to worship a God who has truly blessed us so abundantly during these past several months that have been difficult for all of us. Our prayer here for each and every one of you is that you're safe, that you're healthy, and that you're able to deal with this pandemic in a way that has brought you closer together with your family, hopefully more closer with neighbors that you may not have spent a lot of time with. Now, yeah, before maybe you saw them once or twice pulling in the driveway, and now maybe every evening you're talking over the wall with each other, spending that time reconnecting. I, I know for the church, this has been a very trying time. We, we've had to learn to overcome and adapt a, a situation that none of us thought we'd ever have to face, the inability to gather together in a, in a church building and worship the way we have for centuries. And yet now, we're doing it virtually, and even though we're doing it over the internet, we're using cameras and technology, the message of Jesus Christ, the good news of the gospel is still being spread, and, and perhaps even stronger than it was before. And that, for that, I want to thank you for tuning in and for sharing our live feed with others who are looking for something to fill their lives during this time in which they have that void of emptiness. This morning, as we worship, as I remind you each week, our worship bulletin is online for you. It should be at the bottom of your YouTube page that you're at now. You can scroll down there and click on that link. If you can't find it there, on the main page of Redeemer's website, there is a little tab at the top that says worship. Click on that, and then it'll say worship bulletin, and there you can find our bulletin. You can use that to follow along uh, with the service. Our readings are there. Uh, the, the words for the songs and hymns that we will sing are all there. Also, if you have prayer requests, you can use the prayer request link. Uh, submit those prayer requests to us, and as long as we get them in a timely manner before prayer time, then we'll include those in our worship service this morning as well. Finally, your support is, is something that we really need to continue the work that we're doing here to bring Jesus Christ to you and into your homes. And to do that, first of all, we need your prayers. Pray for us, pray for our, our staff, pray for our volunteers. Uh, they've put in so much time and effort to make sure that this message is, is, is there for you. But also your financial gifts, your, your tithes and your offerings are, are important as well. And there is an online giving link both on the YouTube page at the bottom and on our, uh, our website that you can make those donations to. And, and if you can give, uh, we could really appreciate that and that money will be used to further the, the work that we do here, but also to help some of those that are going through a very difficult time during this pandemic. As we prepare now to uh, begin our, our service and worship together, would you first join me for a word of prayer? Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you this morning. After weeks and weeks of being separated, finally, Lord, it looks like that separation is being lifted little by little. Soon, Lord, we pray that the church doors will open and we will be able to gather together here in your house. But even if it takes longer, we know that you are with us no matter where we are. Lord, bless each and every one of the people that are watching today. Bless their families and our communities. May you work through all of us to be the hands and feet of Christ, reaching into this broken world, sharing your love and your grace and your mercy with all. Lord, bless us as we worship today. And may you speak to our hearts. May you remind us that you are here with us no matter where we are and that you love us and will never forsake us. It's in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. This time, let me turn it over to our praise band, Redeemed, as you lead us in some opening worship songs. Good morning, church. Um, as many of you know, we're very close to being able to come back and worship in the sanctuary, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so until then, we just ask that you guys keep praying for the Church of Christ, and until then, we'll keep worshiping the way we know how, with our hands to the heavens. So please, sing with us.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. As we prepare ourselves this morning to make our confession before God Almighty, would you first join me for a few moments of silent prayer and reflection? O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join me now as we read from the 68th Psalm? God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. But the righteous shall be glad. They shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exult before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched, marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O oh God, you shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. We continue with the Gloria Patre. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father, now seated at his right hand. As you send the Holy Spirit to us through your word and sacraments, give us the strengthening of faith to endure all trials and live in the hope of eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Would you join me now as we read from the word of the Lord. Good morning. The first reading for the seventh Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 1, beginning with verse 12. 
Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these were one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary and the mother of Jesus and his brothers. And in those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted to share in his ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness. A falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and in all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So that field was called in their own language, a Kaldama, which it, that is field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us um, as a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was with um, called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know all the hearts of all, sh sh uh, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in his ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Today's epistle is found in 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning with verse 12. Beloved, do not surprise at the fairy trial when it comes upon you to rest to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when it is glory when the, his glory is revealed if you were insulted for the name of Christ you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of god rests on you but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an, an evil doer or as a meddler yet if anyone suffers as a christian let him not be ashamed let him glorify god in that name for it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what it will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Going over to verse 5, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a li roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Af and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you into his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
holy gospel. Jesus had spoken these words. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you have given me out of this world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All, are you, all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. At this time, as we prepare ourselves to sing our next hymn, I'd like for you to have the opportunity to send us your prayer requests. So if you have a prayer that you would like included in our service this morning, go ahead and, and click on that prayer request link. Uh, send us those prayers. If we get them in time, like I said, we will definitely include them in, in our worship this morning. But if you don't get here in time, don't worry because we will receive those prayers. We will pray for you throughout the week and then we'll include them in, in our service again next week as well. So uh, go ahead and send those prayer requests uh, to us now. So would you join me as we sing our next hymn, Hear Us Father When We Pray.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is kind of an unusual Sunday in the church year because it's a, well, it's a Sunday where we find ourselves between two very significant events in the life of the church. Last Thursday, the 21st of May, was what we call Ascension Day. It was 40 days since Easter, and it was a day in which Jesus was ascended back into heaven. He left his disciples, and he floated back into heaven, past the clouds, back into heaven, and where he now sits at the right hand of God the Father. Now, next Sunday, next week, it will be Pentecost. It'll be the day when the promised Holy Spirit comes upon all of those believers in Jesus that were held up in that upper room. Hey, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and it was like tongues of fire over their heads, and he equipped them to take the gospel message out into the world. It was truly the birthday of the Christian church. But today, today now we find those disciples in this in-between time between those two events. Jesus has left them. They're now on their own, and, and the Holy Spirit, though, has not yet been sent to them. So it must have been a really uneasy time for those disciples of Jesus. You know, I imagine they were probably very confused. They probably felt all alone. They probably felt lost. They were probably wondering, what is going to happen next? Wondering, is this the end? Jesus is gone and now we're here alone? Or is this just the beginning like Jesus had promised us? It was an in-between time for the disciples. But it was not a time without hope. Because they had each other. And they had Jesus praying for them. And that brings us to our gospel reading this morning. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's a, pray, a prayer that he prayed on that night before he was crucified. And as he prayed that prayer, Jesus asked the Father to enable his disciples to remain faithful. To remain faithful to God and to remain faithful to each other. Now, as Jesus prayed for his disciples, there are a few verses that, that really speak to us this morning as we struggle with all of these issues that we're facing in this life. As we long for finally being able to gather together again as believers here inside God's house. Here inside the church. Listen again to what Jesus prayed. As he seeks uh, this blessing and, and this, this fellowship for his disciples. But also as he seeks a fellowship for all of us as well. Jesus prayed this. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Do you, do you sense the togetherness, the unity that, that Jesus hopes and, and prays for in this prayer? In our second reading this morning that, that Marilyn read for us just a little while ago is our epistle reading. And it comes and, and takes this, this theme of togetherness and, and it brings it into the reality that the life of a follower of Jesus is not always going to be easy. In our epistle reading this morning, Peter talks about suffering. He talks about the brokenness of this world. He talks about the brokenness that followers of Jesus are going to encounter from time to time. And then Peter ties the glory and the richness and the unity of the Christian community with the reality that we still live in a broken and less than perfect world. Listen again to what Peter says, starting at verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because, because he cares for you. 
Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So as we look at these two interwoven themes, we see that because of the love and the fellowship, because of the brokenness we encounter in this world, there's a definite obligation for all of us followers of Jesus to uphold. You see, we need to pull together. We need to encourage each other. We need to comfort each other. And we need to be there for one another as we bind ourselves together in the community of Christ that we call the church. One day there was a young boy who was out in the field behind his, his house He was trying to build a a baseball diamond. He wanted to play ball. And and, and there, in what would have been lying between third base and home, was this huge boulder that was sticking out of the ground. And so the little boy was out there trying to move this boulder. He was giving it everything he could, but he just couldn't get it to budge. His father came walking by, and he stopped, and he saw his son struggling with that boulder. Finally, the father said to his boy, Are you using all your strength? Yes. Yes, Daddy, I am, said the boy. I'm using every bit of energy and strength that I have. To which his father replied, no, you're not. You're not using every bit of your strength because you haven't asked me to help you. So the boy asked his father to to help him move the stone. But still it wouldn't budge. So the father called out to his older son and asked him to come and help the two of them move this boulder. But the three of them couldn't move it. They called for a neighbor to come and help. And then another neighbor and another neighbor. And then finally, finally with each one giving all of their strength and all of their energy, the stone was moved. When everyone left, the father turned to his son and said, you see, when we all work together, when we use our strength together, then we can accomplish some things that we are unable to accomplish by ourselves. Unity and togetherness can add strength to any task. If the work that Jesus has given to the church to do is going to be successful, that every member of the Christian community, every member of this fellowship of believers needs to use the gifts that God has granted them. Use them as we visit the sick and the shut-in, as we share our faith with people, as we pray for one another, and as we give our time and our talent and our treasures to those who need them. Ministry is a matter of teamwork. And and Paul really emphasized this this in his first letter to the Corinthians. There in chapter 3, starting at verse 6, listen to what Paul says. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. For a moment or two, I I want you to sit there, no matter where you are listening to this message today, and I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about what you're experiencing right now. What are the circumstances that, that, that you're dealing with? Are things going good for you now? Do you truly feel blessed by God? Or are you going through some difficult and challenging times? Is it your health? 
Maybe you're divorced or, or widowed or separated from your family and, and you just feel so alone. Are you going through a tough time just trying to get ends to meet? Are you worried about or, or have you been affected by the coronavirus? Is it some sin that you're, that you're feeling guilty about? Feeling separated from God because of this temptation that you can't resist? Are you feeling like there's no hope? Well, understand this. No matter what you're going through, no matter whether it's good times or, or bad, Jesus is there for you. He, he's here to comfort you. He's here to protect you. And he's here to give you hope. And he does all of this through this community of believers that we call the church. See, the church is here for you so that you can, get, can receive what Jesus has for you. So he can provide for all of your needs. But the church is also here so that you can be Christ's hands and Christ's feet that reach out and share his love to other people who desperately need them. When Jesus prayed for his disciples in that high priestly prayer, he prayed for everyone who would ever believe in him. And that means he was praying for you. And that should bring you some comfort. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm sure things are going to change. I know for myself, I've been receiving over the past several weeks now, person after person who has called me or, or texted me or emailed me and asked me, when is the church going to reopen? Pastor, when are the doors going to be open? When is the church going to be open again is what I hear. And the truth is, the church is never closed. You see, the church is not a building. The church is a community of believers. The church is you and, and it's me. And sure, we may not be able to, to walk inside this building each week like we always have. We may not, may not be able to worship like we have for years. We not, may, may not be able to, to hang out with our friends on a Sunday morning and, and attend Bible study or, or just talk and find out what's going on in each other's lives. Just share a cup of coffee or a donut together. All this is happening. Not because the church is closed. It's because the church has now become deployed. No longer can we sit here as believers. Now we are forced out into the community among people. And now is the time that we need to take everything that we believe, everything that we've been taught, everything that you and I have been equipped for, and share it with a world that is suffering and scared and hurting. Now is the time for you and me to bring Jesus to people who desperately need him. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor in Germany during World War II. He was martyred for his faith. And in his book that he wrote called Life Together, he wrote this. He said, God has willed that we should seek and find his living word in the witness of a brother or a sister, in the mouth of a man or a woman. Therefore, the Christian needs another Christian who speaks God's word to him. He needs him again and again when he becomes uncertain and discouraged. For by himself, he cannot help himself without belying the truth. He needs his brother as a bearer and proclaimer of the divine word of salvation. He needs his brother solely because of Jesus Christ. The Christ in his own heart is weaker than the Christ in the word of his brother. His own heart is uncertain. His brother's is sure. Soon, you're going to be able to walk back inside this building and you're going to be able to sit in your favorite pew and see all your friends and worship and sing and pray like you always have it will happen soon but until that day 
Don't become discouraged. Instead, become an encourager. Don't be overcome with hopelessness. Instead, fill others with hope. And don't let the darkness of this world overwhelm you. Because you are filled with the light of Christ. So let that light shine. And as that light shines, remember what Jesus prayed for you. Jesus said, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and you are mine, and I am glorified in them. Amen. This time I'd like you to join me as we confess our faith to, to, together, no matter where you are, as the church, as Christians spread abroad. Let us proclaim this triune God in whom we believe as we repeat the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, as we pray together the prayer of the church, I'll end each of our petitions with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. Lord God, grant us unity of faith and singleness of heart as we come to you in prayer. Lord, you've promised us that you'll never abandon your people, that you'll always be with us, and so we ask you to grant us grace to hear your word, to have repentant hearts, and to live our lives as a reflection of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you've promised us your Holy Spirit. Send your Spirit upon all pastors who preach and teach your word. May your Spirit descend upon the church and give us ears to hear and hearts to believe your word. Raise up those who will serve your church in generations to come so that we may never be without the aid of those to serve us in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have the power over all things and you provide order on earth for the protection of the weak, for the punishment of evildoers, and for the encouragement of virtue. Bless Donald, our president, Gavin, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom as they face the challenges of our times and preserve them from the self-serving concerns that can so easily overcome them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you always have compassion for those who suffer. We pray that you'll grant your grace to the sick, to those suffering from mental illness, to the dying in their last hours, and to those who grieve. Hear us as we pray for those we bring before you in these petitions and for those we name in our hearts. Lord, we lift up to you, Laura, who's in rehab now after surgery. We ask, Lord, that you would Lay your healing hands upon her that you would strengthen her and make her well again. We pray for Emily who's recovering from a brain surgery. Give her healing, Lord. Remove the headaches that she still suffers from. Lord, one of your people have reached out to us online and they've asked that you would protect them, that you would keep all evil things away from them, that you would bless this person in the work that she does. 
Lord, we continue to pray for Martha. Lay your healing hands upon him and cure him from the cancer that is in his body. We ask, Lord, that you would bring an end to this pandemic that has affected the world. May we seek the comfort that can only come from you. As we know that in due time, we will be back together. Jobs will come back. People will be able to go back and spend time with friends and, and, and in restaurants and in, in entertainment venues. But until that time, Lord, just reassure us of, of your presence. Lord, may you be with your church, your church that is spread throughout the world, your church that is operating in a very unique and different way. May soon, Lord, our church doors be able to reopen again, and may we be able to gather in your house and worship you. But until that day, continue to use us and work through us as we take your gospel message out into the world. And finally, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of life. We thank you for Maggie as she celebrates her 21st birthday this next week. But Lord, we especially lift up to you Alvera as she celebrates 100 years of life. Lord, thank you for all that she has been able to enjoy and be blessed with from you. And especially, Lord, thank you for her being a blessing to all of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we have gathered week after week and prayed in the name of your son, Jesus, to protect us from the virus that has wreaked havoc upon the world. We know many have been infected, thousands have died. And many are fighting the disease at this very moment. Grant healing to all who are infected. Provide comfort to the families of loved ones whom the virus has taken from them. May we look to you for hope. May you provide us all the promise of your presence as we go forward and rebuild our lives, our communities, our nation, and especially your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, on this weekend, for us as Americans, as we celebrate Memorial Day, we remember those who have given so much so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we are enabled to have in this country. God-given freedoms. Lord, be with those families that mourn the loss of those that have given the ultimate sacrifice. Be with those families whose loved ones are deployed now, who, who cannot spend time with them. Lord, be with those brave men and women who are serving our country. Protect them. May your presence be with them, and may they know that we appreciate all that they have done and continue to do for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, every day you supply us with all the things that we need to sustain our bodies and lives. Give us grateful hearts. May we receive your gifts with thanksgiving and bring to you our tithes and offerings with cheerful hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we rejoice in the Savior's promise to guard the people who wear your name by baptism and faith. Until we're with you in your presence forevermore, guard us against the devil who prowls about like a roaring lion seeking those whom he might devour. Grant us the power to resist him and trust in you without fear, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And hear us now as we pray the prayer that your son Jesus himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Before we bring our service to an end this morning, just a, a couple things I just want to bring to your attention. 
Number one is something that we've talked about a lot over the past couple of weeks. When are we going to be able to reopen the doors and, and resume uh, in-person worship? And, and, and we all know what uh, the president has announced just a, a day or two ago. And, and so our, our council of ministries here is working uh, hard to, to be able to reestablish what it's going to be like to gather together back in, in here for worship. Uh, what kind of social distancing requirements do we have to meet? Um, uh, what other ways are we going to deal with the distribution of communion? Uh, uh, what is the worship service going to be like? And we're working hard, and my prayer is that very soon, I, I would love to by next week on Pentecost be able to gather together, but we're just not quite sure yet. We're still going to need a couple more days to work out everything. So what I'm going to encourage you all to do is pay attention to the website. Uh, I'll place a banner on the front of that website to let you know that the church doors are open and we'll be able to gather for worship and it'll list what requirements, what things we're going to need to do to be able to come back together in God's house. But, but just be patient. Uh, we'll be able to do this as quickly and as safely as we can. And, and understand that there may be some of you that are just uneasy gathering together in, in a building with a community of believers. And that's okay. That's okay. God understands, and we don't want anybody to be felt guilty or pressured to have to come back. But I know there are plenty of you that are just waiting and anticipating that moment that you can get, come in and sit down and worship together. And so as soon as we're able to do that, we'll open those doors for you. One more thing, I, I, I've had a couple of emails that have been sent to me this past uh, week, and they're for some help that some individuals need. We have an individual from the congregation who had, had some surgeries before the pandemic hit. And, and since the pandemic hit, he's been unable to, to leave the, the, the community uh, hospital that he's been at, the uh, uh, rehabilitation hospital, that is. Um, it looks like now and in a couple of weeks he's going to be able to leave. But he he's needs now a, a place to live. And so he's looking at and if, if anybody knows someone or has a, a room to rent, if you can email us and let us know, and we would uh, love to be able to provide that for him. Secondly, there's another individual who has uh, reached out to us. Uh, he served our nation bravely as, as a pilot in our armed forces and has now uh, been able to uh, retire from his military service and, and, and take on a, another job here locally as a pilot. And, um, and he's moving to the area. And is looking also for a place to rent, a, a room or a small apartment. Um, and and if, if you know something, know someone who's got something like that, uh, let us know again. Also, uh, since he's moving into the area uh, from, from away, uh, starting a life again after service in the military, he also is in, in need of, of a, an affordable vehicle. So if you know somebody who's got one, uh, and something that can get him back and forth to the airport, uh, let us know. And we'll forward that information to them. And hopefully we can make these connections that we, as a community of believers, we as the church, can help people meet some of those needs that they need uh, at this time. God's blessings to each and every one of you. I pray the Lord keeps you safe. And I pray that soon, very soon, we will be back together again. You join me now as we sing our closing hymn this morning, Crown Him with Many Crowns. God bless you all, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.